Hello, thank you for stopping by. My name is Becky and this is Bex Reads and today I am sharing with you my October wrap up. I actually had the best reading month I've had since June maybe as far as quantity of books go. Quality I'm not sure but quantity we're headed up. It's because I kicked out an app, a gaming app of my life and uh, <laughs> freed up some of my time. So in October, I read a total of 14 books, but my average star rating was only a 3.32. I had a lot of three stars in October. So I'm going to group these based on the reading vlogs I did so I could keep them all together. I will have all of the vlogs that I did in October linked in the description if you want to know more about these books or my thoughts on them. I'm just going to share my star rating because I've already talked about them. So I did a Sleepy Hollow vlog and in that I read Hollowed by Jessica S. Taylor which was my only five star read of October. And I did own a physical copy of this that I purchased this year but I did listen to the audio through Everand because once again I got a free month of Everand thanks to people using my referral code. So if you would like a free month of audiobooks, my referral code to Everand is always linked in the description of this video. You get a free month, I get a free month, and I'm always so appreciative of it. So thank you once again for that. I also had two three-star reads in that same reading vlog. I read The Horseman of Sleepy Hollow by Rebecca F. Kenny. I got this as a free audio through Everand as well. And I read The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, the radio dramatized version, which again, I got through Everand. So check those out if you want to hear my thoughts on that. I then did my Unstuff Your Kindle reading vlog, which the theme was orange on the cover. So check out these three books that I read in that if you want to know more about them or my thoughts. I read Asuri and the Amaru, which I did own physically. I purchased this book this year, but I also had the free ebook, which is what I read. I gave this 4.5 stars. I then read Fire on Fire by Kirsty Nichols, which I gave 2.5 stars. This was a free ebook that I had as well. And I had one two star in that reading vlog, which was The Witch's Brew by L.B. Mammoth, which is another free ebook that I picked up. I then did my Halloween Smut reading vlog. So these three books you can find in that if you want to know more about them or my thoughts on it. But I had one 4.5 star read in that vlog and that was The Pumpkin King's Bride by Allegra Rose. And this was once again a free ebook that I had. I had one three star read and that was Corny by Sabrina Cross, which was another free ebook I picked up. And I had one two star, which was The Skeleton's Bride by Sylvana Snow, which sadly I paid for. I bought this book because I thought it would be great and it wasn't. So check out that reading vlog for all my thoughts on those books. And for my Black Hat Book Coven pick, I read Burn the Dark by S.A. Hunt. This I gave three stars and I will link the live show discussion down in the description as well if you want to hear mine and the other Coven members' thoughts on this. Okay, now on to the books that I don't have any video or vlogs for. I had one four star and that was Egyptian Myths by Jean Menzies. I wanted to read this because as you're watching this, I'm probably in Egypt, hopefully. Let's pray that I landed safely, okay? Um, so I wanted to get caught up on my Egyptian mythologies and stories, so this was a good one. I gave this four stars. It had some mythology and stories in it that I hadn't heard before, so that was great. I really love the illustration style in here. It's really easy to understand because Egyptian mythology can get quite confusing because there's so many gods. So I enjoyed that. Um, I would say this is good for kids too, to introduce them to Egyptian mythology because it is so simplistically written. But yeah, I'm really glad I got this read before I went to Egypt. I had two 3.5 stars. One was Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. I did own this physically. I got it as a gift last year, I think, but I listened to the audio through Libby. So this is a YA seafaring adventure about Alora Alosa, who is the daughter of an infamous pirate king. And she is sent out on this mission to be captured by this other crew so that she can snoop around their ship and try and find this very much sought after map to this treasure. And so when she gets on board, she finds ways to get herself out of situations while trying to find this map. And she ends up falling for one of the crew members. 
So I liked the seafaring adventure of this. I liked her siren abilities. I thought those were really interesting. I loved the audio narration of this. And I liked that there were some consequences to the choices that she made in this story. Uh, but it's not an all-time favorite. I really didn't connect to any of the characters. I felt no chemistry in the romance that was set up. And I felt like a lot of this book was just her searching the ship for a map. And then she would get caught and then she would escape and then she would search for this map and on and on and on. I would recommend it if you're into YA seafaring adventures, but it's not an all-time favorite. The other 3.5 star I had was The Skull by John Klassen. So this is actually a book that I hauled this month too, and I thought it would be a good time to read it before Halloween, plus it's a children's book, so it was really, really quick. So in this, we were following this little girl. I have no idea how old she is, but she runs away from her home. She's wandering through this forest when she stumbles upon this abandoned manor whose only residence is this skull, who she befriends. I did like that this was a little bit creepier for a children's book. I liked the illustrations in it. I thought they were really cute. It is a bit of a morbid tale and as somebody who, you know, doesn't read dark romance a lot, but, you know, I do read some dark romance, my brain kept trying to make this a dark romance. <laughs> I'm like, this This could so easily be translated to an adult dark romance. It really could. You make this little girl a serial killer who falls in love with the skull of her victim. Somebody write that. <laughs> My only real problem with this was the fact that I thought there would be like a moral lesson for children to learn. I guess maybe there's something to be said about friendship, but this book doesn't really have any sort of lesson. It's just basically like a folklore story and that's it. Uh, but I did enjoy it. It was hilarious the way my brain kept trying to make it a dark romance. If you have kids who like a little bit of creepy, here you go, recommend this. And I had one three star read and that was The Lost Warrior by Atlee Wikes. I did read this physically. I think I purchased this book this year too. So look at me reading books that I purchased this year. So this is the third book in the Inkwater series. It is an adult fantasy romance that follows different characters throughout each book, but they're all sort of woven together as you go along. So in this we are following Helena, whose twin recently got murdered and she is dealing with that. So she makes some choices that end up leading to her being caught and taken to this other kingdom to sort of be forced into this marriage because they think she's someone else. They actually think she's Crystalline from the second book, but she's not. And we follow Sienan who is going after her to try and save her, even though he knows she's going to be mad at him because she is this strong warrior woman who can take care of herself. But he, he has a thing for her, but he doesn't want to admit it because he has some insecurities about getting attached to people because the people he gets attached to always end up leaving him. And she has some insecurities because she's always been the backup plan for people. She's never been chosen first, so she has a real hard time accepting the fact that Sienna would want to be with her. They have to end up pretending to be married to escape this kingdom, and their romance goes from there. So I absolutely love this series. I gave the first two books five stars, six stars. I think I gave the novella five stars. This one, however, just did not hit for me. I didn't feel the chemistry between Sienna and Helena it felt like a lot of this book was just them trying to get out of this kingdom and having sex. There wasn't much else to it until the very end when this big battle is supposed to happen and then the battle is over really quickly. One of my biggest complaints about this is that this couple does not communicate at all and if they would just talk they would alleviate a lot of the angst that was in this book and I got tired of the angsty BS in it. I did like that Helena was depicted as this very strong, muscular character. I feel like that's something you don't see a lot of in fantasy romance. You always hear about these badass women who can wield weapons and fight, but they're always like depicted as like these very dainty little girls who, if I see fan art of them, I'm like, where's this chick's muscles? She's supposed to be wielding these weapons and she looks like a stick. So I appreciated that the depiction of her actually did emphasize her strength and her muscular nature. This also did have pretty good smut in it. Um, they didn't have a lot of chemistry, but their smut was good, which again, always a plus. And I liked that at the end of this book, we see all of the characters from books one, two, and three all come together for a common goal. Now let's move on to my haul and unhaul. I did 
haul quite a few books this month I did. So first up I hauled A Dark and Secret Magic by Wallace Kinney. I read this last month and really enjoyed it so I wanted a copy. Look at that fall cover. Love it. I got the Owl Cray edition of Immortal Dark by Tejest Gurma. Probably said that name wrong. But there is the cover. It's got some stenciled edges. The back. It's got some end paper art. The Mad Lovers. And then it's got a quote on the back. I have heard mixed things about this book. Several people I know have loved it. A couple people I know didn't. So it is a vampire paranormal romance, I think, YA. But I'm willing to give it a shot. Hopefully I like it because I do like this cover. I then went to Barnes & Noble and I picked up The Coincidence of Coconut Cake. This is a book. I needed to find a book for a very specific video that's coming out in December. And this is the one I found. So stay tuned to see what this is about. Also at Barnes & Noble, I picked up The Stars Are Dying by Chloe C. Penaranda. I've heard of this book. I've seen it around. I saw stenciled edges. And then I took the dust jacket off and I saw a naked hardcover and I didn't even read the synopsis. So hopefully this doesn't suck. <laughs> I then went to Sleepy Hollow, which I will link my Sleepy Hollow reading update and vlog down below. But my bookstore adventure will be the next video you see. And in that I share the books that I bought. But here's a sneak peek of the books that I bought. I picked up The Spellbook of Katrina Von Tossel. No idea what this book is about. It said spellbook and I thought that sounded witchy. So got that. And then I got Raising the Horseman. Again, no idea what this is about, but I think it's a YA. Thought I'd pick that up. And I picked up The Skull, which I already read. And the last book that I hauled this month is a nonfiction. Who the hell am I, y'all? And that is The Small and the Mighty by Sharon McMahon. The only reason I have this book is because I follow Sharon on Instagram. She is the person who keeps me apprised of news that I need to be aware of and all that jazz. I think she's a very trustworthy person. So when she wrote a book, I thought I would support her. It is 12 Unsung Americans Who Changed the Course of History. So one day, maybe, I will read this nonfiction. So those are the books that I hauled. This is how much I spent on physical books this month. I'm not proud of that, but it could have been worse. <laughs> so now let's go on to my small unhaul. All of these books will be listed on my Pango store. If you see any that you want to check out, check out my Pango, see if they're still available. There's no guarantee they'll be available by the time you see them. But first up, I am unhauling A Curse of Blood and Wolves. This is a Fairy Lou fantasy romance pick. I tried listening to the audiobook of this and I hated this female main character. So couldn't stand it. Getting rid of it. I'm also unhauling The Night Garden by Nicole Northwood. I picked this up at a polycon. I thought it sounded interesting. It, she, it seemed witchy, gothic. The, there was a cat familiar. What I didn't realize was this book was set at an academy. And again, I hated this female main character, so I DNF'd this book. So check that out if you're interested. It does come with some goodies that I'll throw in. I am also unhauling Practical Demonology. I attempted to read this book. I got a few chapters in. And this just read a little too YA for me. Some of the characters were far too immature YA for me. Like, they are in the midst of, like, this pandemic where... Things are turning into zombies and all one of the characters could care about is attending this school to meet boys. And I'm like, no, I don't want that. And lastly, I am unhauling an Owl Crate edition of Your Blood, My Bones. I tried to listen to this as well and I just didn't care about the story. I couldn't get into it. Uh, it's got block sprayed edges. Got some foiling on the cover some end paper art so it sounded really interesting because I thought it might have some like um blood and earth magic in it and maybe it does but I just didn't get far enough in it because I I just couldn't get into the story that is my October wrap up let me know down in the comments what was your favorite book of October but if you don't want to comment that but would like to let me know that you made it to the end of this video could you leave me a a uh, horse emoji for hollowed because that was my favorite book of October. 
And with that, thank you so much for watching. And until my next video, good luck on your November reading. Bye.